Adam, Davik Cyborg here, uh, Adam, Davik Cyborg here for vlog number 147 of my daily vlogs, weekly vlog of my daily vlogs. It's uh, 147, October 7th through October uh, 14th. And on the 17th, I talk about democracy still alive. And this was me talking about the um, White House presentation of where uh, Barack and Michelle Obama got their uh, White House portraits, official White House portraits uh, revealed. And... Um, uh, talked uh, much talk about the uh, state of America and uh, the what the purpose of America and the uh, the corruptive forces and things that have kind of you know got their hooks into America and the uh, the cor things that have happened especially the GOP and how uh, things have gone awry from what you know the original founding ideas and principles into what it's become now and um, ultimately. Uh, as they said in that little presentation that they gave, the American dream is still alive and well, at least in my opinion too. And um, you can still, you have to, it's definitely not as easy as it used to be, or as easy as it ever was, but you can still um, get public loans for uh, like Pell Grant, you can still get uh, things for like financial aid, no matter how good, poor you are, actually the poor you are the better. And you can get um, public funding, and you can get a lot of, uh, I, you know, aid that like I did. Otherwise, I would have never got my bachelor's, and pr uh, never would have been able to get my uh, master's either, because I borrowed money all the way up. And thankfully, you know, that all got forgiven because of my uh, neurological issues. But um, of course, I would have not needed it forgiven if I would not have had those neurological issues. I could have taught and paid it all back. But you know, there, life happens, as I like to say. But uh, white supremacy and racism and uh, all financial, like holding you back, uh, persecution and prosecution, yeah, persecution, will not uh, stop the American dream from happening. And as it, you know, is present in Barack Obama and his wife ever actually, you know, being the president and the first wife, first lady. And uh, that definitely shows you that it can still happen and the American dream is still alive and you can still um, get your law diploma and make the right connections and the, be in the right circles of people and yes uh, money does corrupt everything money you do have to have a certain level of uh, degree or a certain in with the right crowd to be able to rise that high but you can still get in that crowd with you when you're even like as low as on the totem pole or I know that's racist as low on the um financial scale as uh people have been but anyway that was that blog for the most part and then uh the next blog was about the death of queen elizabeth because i wrote this like the day before or day after a day two days before or two days after i forget after she died and um ultimately the constitutional monarchy that is the united kingdom and uh for the most part as i learned in uh, political science classes the uh, United Kingdom is really, the Queen is basically a figure, the definition of a figurehead. No real power. Yes, they approve of the Prime Minister, but if they hated the person, it wouldn't matter. Because you're just, you know, it's ceremonial, it doesn't mean anything. And if, if the sitting uh, King or Queen didn't like the Prime Minister, they could say, I don't like that person, don't choose them. It wouldn't matter, ultimately. The process still happens, but the constitutional democracy that is the... Um, Tories and the the uh, Labour Party and the all the um, their uh, their di uh, par parliament eh, parliamentarian system that I'm trying to say that uh, that is the Parliament would still function and still work regardless of whether the sitting monarch actually approved of the Prime Minister. But like I said, figurehead, and um, ultimately the. Uh, seeing all the love and like the overall yes it's all kind of nationalistic but it's just basically pride and love of your own country and um i can remember a time where it didn't matter like whether you're red or blue democrat republican you still loved america and no i'm not trying to be a nationalist no i'm not trying to say you should do it no matter what it is you shouldn't criticize and no you should criticize you should love you should be able to say the things that are wrong you should be able to say things that are right and highlight those and you know be able to speak very eloquently and in depth about both if you really love your country and um watching all the outpourings of love and stuff i would be nice if that could happen for america for some reason or another but um I, which i basically talk about later in these vlogs but anyway that was basically that vlog and then the uh on the ninth i'll talk about wait
sci-fi uh, fantasy isn't all white supremacy, national or you know, racist. And that was just in reaction to the whole um, up in arms about the Lord of the Rings having uh, uh, African American actors playing them in, uh, in the, the House of Dragons, the Lord, uh, not Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones universe, you know, the George R. R. Martin verse, having a black, uh, well-to-do, wealthy family that has all white hair, which is still kind of cool, but you know, different, and uh, like they're all albinos and their hair only. But um, just the, the all up in arms and paranoia, the craziness and all the people, just the, all the fandom basically being freaked out about it. But, um, and as Neil Gaiman pointed out, there is actually a, uh, in the first descriptions of one of the characters, I forget his name, but he's like, he's browner in skin than most people. It's like, yeah, that probably describing black people. You know, he just didn't have, it, that was just the way he said it. Instead of just coming right outside, he's black. But um, ultimately, the better we are, the all, all, all of us together, you know, interchanging of ideas, interchanging of races, and interchanging of cultures and everything, the better we become. And ultimately, in sci-fi, should be like that too. And um, well, I, honestly, I really like both, the, you know, properties that are like the uh, Rings of Power. I think it is, which I need to catch up on a few episodes, and the um, House of Dragons, which I watch weekly when it comes out, is. You know, pretty top notch, and I can honestly, people, so many people might disagree, but I think it's very on par with all the Game of Thrones stuff that HBO has done previous to this. And uh, as long as far as the Ring of Power, like I was never really a uh, Lord of the Rings fan to begin with, and honestly, I like them better than I did the Lord of the Rings movies. But anyway, then on the tenth, I talk about um, oh. Oh yeah, a year since coming back to Texas, and that was me talking about a year ago. I was talking about uh, me uh, basically taking my ball and going home from North Carolina, and uh, all the repercussions, and having to spend three days in the hospital, and having to, um, you know, eventually work my way back to Texas with my brother coming and getting me, and all that, and that whole fun escapade that that was, and uh, that was about a year ago, and that was just me basically talking all that out, and how. Um, Yes, I never actually wanted to ever go back to Texas, but I'm here, and, uh, you know, that's about, you know, uh, with family, I guess, is where I belong, and with family, I am. And uh, ultimately, my uh, my wife wanted to be with the family, and we are still with the family, and in our minds, we're still in mom's family, because she basically saw my mother as her mom, because she has a uh, Amu over there, because that's the way, what her, she calls her mom, what mom's in Bangladesh and that area of the country or world basically call their mothers like uh, Amu and Abu and uh, very much like the uh, Latin Americans and uh, Hispanics and all call their you know mom mother and father some other term and uh, uh, all nationalities all countries all you know we all have our own names for our own mothers and fathers and uh, ultimately that's that was basically that blog entry and then on the uh, 11th I talk about my fifth bus booster which I went and got my fifth booster shot which is still hilarious because every time I went and when the uh, which now I have two or actually I guess three vaccine cards in my uh, sorry don't want me and you do the white supremacist three the three sorry that's the basketball three still in my opinion but um, still the uh, I have so many uh, vaccinations I had to get. I have three vaccine cards, and uh, I've had to staple the other two in my uh, passport, too. Thankfully, I don't have any visas, so, you know, that is nice. But um, ultimately, the uh, that I got the uh, COVID shot and flu shots at the same time, and that was in preparation for me going back to Bangladesh and being sure I, my uh, all my vaccines are current. And um, that was basically that blog. And then uh, uncomfortable reality. Um, well, okay, go, go back to the last one. Uh, uh, like the first time I, or one of the bef time before I went, actually went and got the shot. Before I found out I had to wait actually like two more days, three, day, three more days, whatever many more days it was. That um, you're like, oh, how many vaccines have you had? I'm like four so far, so I, I need the fifth. And they're just no, most people haven't gotten seven. I'm like, well, I have. I'm just somebody that went and got the shots when they were available. And ultimately, I have, uh, for the most part, I thought I was going to be um, immunosuppressed because the drugs I was taking then for multiple sclerosis, which I thankfully don't have to take anymore, whether 
suppressing my immune system. I was concerned about that. And then since then, I've just not really wanted to get COVID. And I'm thankful that I haven't gotten it yet. And that's, I wanted to keep this streak alive. And anyway, that was that blog for the most part. And then on the um, 13th, I talk about uncomfortable reality. And that is me talking about American democracy and um, me being a historical, American his history historian and American political scientist. I um, are seeing the whole um, run up to the midterms and then the 2024 election. And ultimately, the uh, historian in me is like, why is this, he's not running? Why are people even worried about that? He can't run. He'll be in prison. And whether or not the DOJ actually does that, we'll have to see. But um, from all I've seen and from all I've heard from legal, legal scholars and legal um, people more knowing well law than me, that he should not be able to run because he's committed too many crimes. And that was the whole point of why he never should have run to begin with, because he was a criminal. He was a... Oh, want to be mafioso somebody like that shouldn't ever be president and uh the fact that one of the first speeches you gave was about how the criminals and all the bad people in mexico were going to come invade you know america and like <laughs> trying to make all mexicans sound like they're pancho villa and um just sad and uh <laughs> america its people was one people and no matter what race you are no matter where you're from you still become american as the uh the thing on the Statue of Liberty says, give me your huddle masses, your weak, or your, uh, what was it? Huddle masses, the, your, your weak, your, your forgotten, your, um, thrown out, your exiles, your, basically saying everybody that's been thrown out of other countries and pushed away from other countries, come here and we'll take care of you. And that is what America is. We're a nation of immigrants. That is still a, annoys me to no end that when people go off about immigration, I'm like, you do realize that your forefathers and your, your, heritage is from another country right you do realize that they were once immigrants too your great grandfather or great 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 grandfathers and great 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 grandmothers were not from america and if it wasn't for america's welcoming spirit they wouldn't be here and ultimately you're they were lucky that they got here because look at you you're in the first world now you're not in a uh yes that's a somewhat racist uh socioeconomic term but i'm using it and uh you're better off now from then when you were because i promise you you're the world that you have now with your uh technology and your probably your smartphone i'm sure and uh wi-fi and re ready medical services ready internet ready everything you can take talk to your li li heart's delight in america can't do that in a lot in some other countries and heck in uh bangladesh i think i'm gonna have to do vpn in and out to actually be able to use the internet and um you know, thankfully I have a VPN so I could do that. And, but I'm from American, from America with American accounts and American technology and American, you know, access. Somebody from Bangladesh would have to work around and be able to actually do, yes, you could do that, but it's a heck of a lot harder if you're from actually from Bangladesh, living in Bangladesh to begin with. And ultimately you being here in America gives you an advantage over it. You won the geographic lottery, whether you realize it or not, you did. And yes, you might be poor, you might be without, but you're probably still getting some public assistance. Or if you're not, you're probably at least at a job where you can make money and still make a life. And if not, you're in a gig, gig economy. And there's you know many other ways you can work your way up. And ultimately, you know, America is America. And uh, anyway, like I said, my American historian, American political scientist, so I'm kind of biased in that way, I guess. But then on the uh, in the next one on the 14th which is the last vlog of this vlog i uh pretty basically talk about uh, how america is like a limping democracy and it is on, on us to um vote in the next elections and uh be sure we d vote for the only functional political party still in america the democrats because the republicans are basically fascist want to be uh, victor orban or vladimir putin puppets and uh Honestly, there will never be a uh, king of America. There will never be a uh, monarch because Americans in, in general won't stand for it. I don't care how much the right thinks that Americans are all in love with the uh, idea of a monarch, but they're not. They would reject it, and I can promise you that th that would not be last very long. And how um, 
you have people like Tucker Carlson and people trying to make a big deal about Hungary and their uh, nationalism and their, their, their Christian nationalism and how uh, we, we need a state, state church and all this other stuff. It's like, do you remember the founding fathers ever saying anything about state church? Oh, yeah, they rejected that because that was against their ideas. That was against the whole them being deists. They they, they thought that Allah, God, whatever you call him, didn't care enough. Of, they had He has bigger stuff going on than worrying about little uh, pissant little people doing stuff on America or in America, huh. on the world, on Earth, basically. he he He's not going to trouble himself, or it, the, they, them, are not going to trouble themselves with what their little creation here on Earth is doing. He probably has some quasars or something he's reckoning with right now. But ultimately, that's how I viewed it until I became a Muslim. And uh, ultimately, yes, it's good to be uh, a good Muslim. Yes, it's good to be nice and kind and uh, honorable and all that. But seeing the uh, golden rule and it be, being sure that you observe and treat others like you want to be treated isn't, ult in my mind, is not a religious thing. That's a good person thing. That means you're a good person. And that my mom did not raise us as a Christian family. She, she tried. We got rejected from every church we ever went to. But um, ultimately... I'm thankful of that because it didn't have me all pigeonholed and I only thought that, you know, there's only one way of seeing things. And that gave me the ability to observe uh, Islam as a, in geography class when I was in, what was sophomore high school. And then I saw, hmm, that might be cool. I'm, I'll look into that later. Well, you know, yeah, I didn't ever imagine it would take like 30, 20, 25, 26 years later that um, I wind up becoming a Muslim myself and then marrying a, uh, my wife, like I have now. That's a Muslim woman and me being a Muslim man and me changing my name. I never imagined that would happen, but hey, here I am and I ain't complaining about it. But anyway, that's the uh, blog, uh, blog 147, October 7th through the 24th. Next time will be the tw uh, 48th, 15th through the 22nd. But this was 47 for the uh, 7th through the 14th. Um, go to the link when I flash it. You can uh, go to my uh, Medium, clap for my stories on Medium. You can uh, go to the Facebook like page and like that. You can send me money on uh, PayPal and uh, email me, or you can uh, follow me on Twitter. Or I tweet a lot, but not quite as much as I used to. But anyway, Fatima, I still love you. Still looking forward to you being here. Still looking forward to coming to you in about a week or so, hopefully. But uh, anyway, thanks for watching. I'll be back next time. And uh, subscribe. And uh, thank you very much, and goodbye.